today's ride is the from the Browns Brothers wine area of Millowa to Bansdale and the journey goes firstly to Whitfield and then to Mansfield which is a great ride on to Jamison and this video is about Jamison to La Cola the mainly dirt section which is uh, an amazing ride This part of the ride is about 90 kilometres over Mount Ski. And when we left Jamison, the skies were blue, the sun was out, and it was looking really good. section up Mount Skeen is pretty easy going with the surface is smooth. I only had to contend with Tony's dust that she was leaving behind her. We wound up the mountain with the typical cliff drop to your left so that it was a valley beside the edge of the mountain. In the twists and turns you eventually find your way on the other side of the mountain with the cliff edge now on your right. It's not hard to miss that magnificent mountainous views over that edge. climbing and the surface is still pretty good. Sky was still blue, weather was nice, still warm, it was looking like a great morning. Yesterday we came into Jamison via Woods Point and we had lunch in Jamison at one of the cafes and where we were eating there was two other fellows there who had just stopped for lunch as well and we wondered where they'd come from so I asked and they'd actually just come over this mountain and they had a little bit to say about it saying it was quite a difficult ride and over the top the visibility was poor there was a lot of fog and cloud and rain and the surface was very very broken uh, not graded at all and, and what we were starting to notice is the surface was deteriorating um, and there's a great view over the side that I was referring to there's plenty of that but the surface was is getting worse and worse for us but just still pretty good we also started noticing that ahead of us the sky was no longer blue it was looking a little gray and we wondered what was in store for us scenery is usually good to look at and there's a lot of green around but we did pass a number of branches that had fallen along the way. An interesting thing to see was a bathtub on the side of the road. Still climbing and noticing a few more ruts on the road were beginning to appear. And we were thinking, well, what we were told yesterday, very accurate, or well, it was starting to look like maybe it was. By the time we'd ridden 30 to 40 kilometres, we'd noticed the sky getting darker and drops of rain were hitting our helmet visors. 
were riding into the fog and clouds and continued to ride amongst the clouds for quite some time. One of the biggest problems up in the clouds is your visor starts to fog and our vision was getting worse and we eventually had to lift the visors and tolerate the cold air and the rain. It was just six degrees at the top of Mount Skeen. The road was now just rocks and gravel in most places. Every now and then I'd check out the edge of the road to see what visibility we had but then I was thinking bikes usually go exactly where you look so I stopped looking over the edge of the cliff. As visibility continued to decline we had to work harder to find the smoothest path through through this gravel and rocks. Mount Skeen is part of the Great Dividing Range and has an elevation of 1570 metres. As we neared the top, we found the first cars that we'd seen on the trip, and these were actually doing a U turn turning around and going the other way in the middle of the road. Interesting, we, at that stage we still had our visors closed and could barely see them. We did discuss stopping at the Mount Skeen lookout but had a little chuckle about it and kept riding. The surface was continuously changing, but we still had mainly rocks and gravel. We passed our second set of four-wheel drives. Finally, we were on the descent, still dealing with rocks and gravel wondering how long it would take for this fog and clouds to lift. Before long, the vision was good. There were plenty of this ungraded stuff and we were continually looking for the smoothest route through, which is sort of just adding to the fun. were on the same tyres and were riding on Michelin Anarchy Adventures when we lowered the tyre pressures to about 30, 35 instead of the usual 36, 42. Probably could have gone lower but you know we didn't really know what, how much to expect. much easier. The surface had improved and was hard packed and smooth. The scenery on this ride continued to impress. It's probably one of the reasons why so many people love adventure riding. It was quite beautiful.
beautiful riding through the green grass and the bushes with the road lined with big tall trees which had been burned in the bushfires a few years back. We thought the fog was gone. We turned another corner and there it was again. And we're riding back into it. And again, you wonder how long is this gonna go for? By now, we were thinking we were getting closer and closer to La Cola and it wasn't going to be long, so you sort of start picking up the pace a little. It was nice riding through this part with the rich green grass and beautiful wildflowers. We'd spent plenty of time trying to dodge the water-filled potholes, but by now Tony was just choosing to ride straight over them. The guys at Jamison also warned us about another problem. We're going to hit bitumen 12 kilometres out of the cola, and the problem was that there'd been a landslide four kilometres into that bitumen and so the rest of the way the final eight kilometres to La Cola was totally closed and we were advised that we were going to be detoured. This was really good because if we'd gone all that way and saw the road was closed we might have had a bit of a shock. The further we went, the more glimpses of blue sky we could see in front of us. And we also knew we were getting closer and closer to La Cola, and so the bitumen should have been soon. And here it was, meaning 12 kilometers to La Cola. So this is a pretty good ride. If the road was dry, it would have been great. But after standing up for a couple of hours, we sort of took the opportunity to sit down and have a little bit of a rest. Eventually the road was dry and we could pick up the pace a little. The blue sky was beginning to dominate and we finally reached that road close sign. The detour was down a dirt road and then through some beautiful farmland. This really just added to the experience. This whole surface was all pretty smooth, very easy going, but the scenery was absolutely magnificent. It was a one lane road through their property and if there was something coming the other way, and we did pass two vehicles, it would have been a bit of a, a challenge had we been in a car. And as with plenty of farms, there's plenty of animals, and there was quite a few cows roaming around on the roads on this one. we were 
quite relaxed, just keeping an eye on the cows and their cow shit. That drive had moved way over for us, that was pretty good. But we were quite relaxed, taking in the scenery and riding along the river, which was on the edge of the road, which was quite nice as well. But this pair of cows were sort of deciding what they were going to do, and they end up jumping up the hill. We're sort of now wondering how much further this will go until we get to Lakola, because it was a lot further than the eight kilometres that it we had to go on the um, bitumen road. And this is the actual bitumen road which Lakola is blocked off from. And what was a big surprise is the minimum, minute you turned onto it, you were right there at the cola, and it's a pretty small little place. And I'm sort of thinking, where's the pub? Well, there is none. This was day 11 of our Victorian trip, and we'd had 10 marvellous days beforehand. But this one might have been the most fulfilling up to this point anyway. We had a rest and a bite to eat at the La Cola General Store before taking on one of the other great roads of Victoria, La Cola Road. Mm -hmm.